Hey guys, it's another pen mail video, and you know, I didn't know I had this much stuff that had come in, so I'll show you what I got. Let's go ahead and start with this one. Uh, this is something I found on Mercari on that website, and this is something that I looked at for a while, didn't know whether or not I really wanted to get it or not. Uh, but it is essentially a notebook. And, you know, I figured, why not? You know, for I had the extra cash to get it. I didn't really have any really good leather notebooks. And I certainly didn't have anything in the A5 size. So I went ahead and picked this up. It was uh, discounted fairly decently. And um, it was something that I figured, why not? And it came with a fountain pen along with it. So uh, this nice leather magnet closure on it. Um, and an accompanying fountain pen. I Conquer. I C O N Q U E R is the brand name. Wasn't really familiar with it. Um, you know, I had day timers and that kind of thing way back when, especially back in the 90s when they were really popular. And uh, so I went ahead and I just threw some business cards in here because it does have that. You know, it has a window for you know, credit card, ID, whatever you want. Uh, so I went ahead and figured I'll give it a shot. Now, one of the reasons it was probably discounted is because as you go through it and you open it up, you, know, you get you know, maps and con conversions. And uh, as you go through 2018 calendar, that doesn't bother me, the fact that that's an old calendar. Uh, important dates to remember for 2018. Important dates for 2019. So obviously it's been sitting around for a couple of years. I couldn't care less. SWOT analysis, that was kind of interesting. If you ever get the opportunity uh, to do a SWOT analysis at your company or your organization, uh, you probably know what that stands for. Uh, and then it just has a bunch of A5 filler paper, you know, memo and date. And I'd looked at some more filler paper with a six holes. Uh, so I just may pick up some paper um, off from eBay or something to stock this thing up. And it comes with a nice little pen loop here and this iConquer fountain pen. Uh, it's uh, kind of uh, just made for them to be able to brand. It's nothing special. It almost uh, looks like the, um, the Amazon Basics fountain pen kind of thing. That's what it reminds me of. But a nothing special black lacquered metal pen. But I'll show you how it writes. You know, I just today I finally inked it up just to see what it was like. Um, and I had not inked it up until today, even though I had this. And I haven't used this thing actually, not yet, because I haven't been going anywhere for meetings. So uh, you know, I'm like stuck here at home. But I figured the next time I have a business meeting, I'll be good. Well, a little while later, it comes this thing. Yet another notebook. And uh, this is one I originally I did not plan on getting, but my company uh, has a, an employee rewards program and I got nominated for uh, their quarterly award. And so I won the award and they had fountain pen. No, they didn't have fountain pens. They had uh, ballpoint pens, a pen set. And I said, nah, no thanks. This is a leatherette. The other one was leather. This is like a leatherette kind of thing. Uh, but it is like the full legal size. You open it up and you've got you know, pockets in it and a zipper and uh, card slots and a built-in solar calculator. And it's got the company logo branded on the front and it came with this notepad here. I have used this notepad and I may just use it for writing sample in just a little while. Uh, but I actually wrote a letter with this notepad here not too long ago. So before um, this week, I didn't have any notebooks like this to speak of. Now I've got one in an A5 and now I've got one in legal size. Just recently one of you viewers uh, who looked at my new Parker 51 uh, release video had said something about I might want to consider trying a Wingsong 601. So I said all right I'll give it a shot why not. So a Wingsong 601 arrives in a box sort of like this, very similar to what a Lamy box would be. Uh, but you got that open slotted box, an instruction manual entirely in, in, in Chinese with the exception, it does say fountain pen on it. And here you've got the pen. Obviously I did ink it up uh, and this one uh, has a Waterman purple in it. A, it's a nice uh, purple ink. Uh, this is a piston uh, that is in here and it's a pump filler. 
So essentially you would press down on that sort of like you would an old vac filler and you pull off the nib and here's what you've got. You've got a transparent. I did have several color options and I did opt for the demonstrator version. You've got that hooded nib at the end very uh, similar to a Parker 51 uh, and it is a slip cap compared to the modern Parker 51 that just came out where it's a screw top uh, and I use this uh, in writing some today and I'll show you how to how it performs here in just a little bit as well I'll probably do a full video on these uh, these pens as well as some of the others I've got uh, this one which I found tremendously interesting uh, Brunzeel, B-R-U-Y-N-Z-E-E-L. Uh, it is, I am told, a Dutch brand. So it is something that you would typically find in Europe, and I did have this shipped to me from the Netherlands. It was fairly inexpensive. It was only like $3 for the pen, plus another couple dollars for shipping, and I'll show you some more close-ups. And it is essentially a student pen. You've got, uh, it's all plastic, and you've got a plastic clip there. And I'm assuming that this is a roll stop as well. Not really sure the design feature of that. Uh, but you, you pull it off, and it is a fountain pen. You do have a rubberized grip that sits there. It does cap fairly well. Makes for a fairly long pen, though, if you cap it. And it was actually fairly surprising to me. It did fairly well. It is a cartridge converter pen. It did come with an international sh standard short cartridge but I whipped out um, a converter that I had, and you can tell I've been using this an awful lot. I've actually uh, run down the ink quite a bit, and I think I used some Diamine Asa Blue in this particular pen, and I've used it a lot since I got it. So um, I'm going to have to uh, show you a writing sample before I totally write out, run out of ink on it. Another one, Montegrappa. This is an interesting one here. UEFA Championship Soccer League. Um, not that I'm much into soccer or football, depending upon from whence you came, uh, but it is um, a, a tapered down Monte Grappa with kind of a, a widening cap here, and it almost looks like a, a soccer ball here on the finial. Uh, very serviceable curved clip, and it, this one particular one is a screw top. And it is a, like I said, it's a Monte Grappa, but it's a low-end Monte Grappa. I, I've got another Monte Grappa here in my collection. Quite honestly, I only had one other because I just hadn't gotten around to Monte Grappas yet. And I do like the one that I had, very smooth. Uh, matter of fact, the one that I've got is a Game of Thrones Monte Grappa. Um, but uh, this one here has got its own uh, branded converter that sits in there nicely. And I went ahead and uh, got this particular pen. So, um, it says it's a medium, but it writes more on the fine end. Uh, I got this on clearance, normally retail uh, 185 and this was going for right around $99. So I figured, you know, for a Montegrappa, I know it should be quality. So I went ahead and got it, but I'm not quite as impressed with that one. Arnold. Arnold is a... Uh, a vintage company out of Virginia that is no longer around. I've done some other videos on Arnold pens, and quite honestly, some Arnold pens have really surprised me and been fantastic. I've got one that's a button filler, is one of my favorite uh, vintage pens that I have in my collection. It's one that I had restored, and it kind of surprised me with how well it wrote. And I've got some others that are old lever fillers, just like this. But not just like this in that this one is a pencil, mechanical pencil combination, but it is also a lever filler. I picked up this particular pen from Spearbob, spearbob.com. You're going to hear his name a couple more times here shortly. Uh, but this was restored, and it did, um, it did have a nice new sack on it. A very fine line on this particular pen. Um, I used, actually, I used that pen, this pen, and this pen today to uh, write a letter. Uh, to a friend of mine and put that into the mail. So I got uh, these to, uh, just recently. Also picked up, uh, speaking of Parker and button fillers, uh, also from Spearbob, I got this Parker. This uh, particular one is a Parker Challenger. It's a little smaller um, button filler, but it is actually very nicely kept. Um, I didn't expect uh, top of the line uh, for this particular model, but it actually turned out to be a lot nicer than I thought it was going to. The celluloid on this is still very well kept, just a little bit of wear on that band and just a little bit of wear on that clip, but not nothing really appreciable. 
and then it's uh, got a nice small fine nib on it. So I've used this one quite a bit as well, and I do like that that pattern. You're gonna see that it's fairly common though, is that kind of pattern also went into pens like this, which is a Schaefer balance um, and a uh, lever filler from Schaefer, and you know I'm quite happy with it. I it, the, as far as how it looks. I have not inked this one up yet, so I don't know how it writes, but uh, you know, it's got some nice imprint on it. Um, the nib is still really nice. It's got a new sack on it. I just have not um, put ink into it yet because I've had a bunch of other pens uh, to play with. So this is on my list of pens with which to play. And uh, last but not least, I ended up with some Parker Quink ink. This particular uh, bottle of ink came to me all the way from India, uh, where I understand uh, is probably where it's manufactured, uh, but I did get a nice little bottle of it. I also got it from a different vendor. I got an identical bottle that was black. So I had a Parker Blue and a Parker Black. The problem with the black is the cap was cracked right in here. So it was leaking ink on the inside of the package when I unpackaged it. It did fairly well in that it was still wrapped up in um, a couple of two Ziploc bags, so it contained it, but it had ink everywhere all over it, but it still had an appreciable amount of ink. So essentially I had to get some uh, empty vials like this right here, and uh, I filled up uh, like four or five ink sample vials, and I've been using that Parker Quink uh, in black as well, and I did use this also in some blue. So let me go ahead and show you how some of these write. Uh, maybe you got a few ideas for your pen collection. All right, so let's go ahead and take these pens. I'll go ahead and get that notepad in the uh, the company branded notepad, uh, and we'll go ahead and put some nibs to paper and see how they write. All right, so here's a pad out of that portfolio, and it's actually fairly fountain pen friendly. It's not really smooth. It actually feels like a normal stock paper that you would get, but it really does well as far as um, being able to write with a fountain pen, and I wrote like a four-page letter with it, and it did well. On the back side, it is not lined on the back side, so it's only lined on the front. Let's go ahead and start with this Brunzeal. And just because I can and because I feel like it, all right? So let's go ahead and put nib to paper. The B-R-U-Y-N-Z-E-E-L. I do believe that's how you spell it. If not, you'll see a correction on the screen. But this is a student pen. And I gotta be honest, for like a five or six dollar pen shipped to my door from Europe, this pen actually did very well. It does have a nice little bit of flex to that nib, and it was it's written first time every time, with the exception of when I was writing a letter, it started to run out of ink. So I had to prime it just a little bit uh, before I totally ran out of ink, and quite honestly, it wouldn't shock me if I just ran out of ink right now. But this has actually been fairly good. I was actually very surprised. And I put into that uh, this ink right here, some Diamine Asa Blue. Asa Blue. I do kind of like this ink. Um, it doesn't come across uh, when you first write with it uh, light, but it does lighten up as it dries. But so far, so good. I mean, for just a couple bucks for a, a student pen, why not? All right, let's go ahead and pull out this Arnold. These are obviously in no particular order. Obviously, you are not too gonna, I mean, you could post this and you can get that mechanical pencil in there and it's not gonna be too bad. Um, I don't know, I don't know if I really like that. The mechanical pencil does work, by the way. And uh, you can see I'm gonna put some lead out there. So it is operational in Arnold. And this is a fountain and pencil combo. This comes up with a really nice line, a nice fine line. It's actually a very good writing pen for what it is. It's not the smoothest thing in the world, and I don't expect that necessarily from a third tier manufacturer, but then again, some third tier pens are great. Arnold tends to make very good, or they did, 
make very good, very reliable pens that you can depend on. And I've been able to depend on every Arnold that I've ever inked up and used. So I was very happy with it. And this one is that Parker Quink, the blue. Yeah, it's a little scratchy, especially on this particular paper. But like I said, they were known to be dependable in a very utilitarian uh, piece. It wasn't necessarily meant to be um, a, an extravagant luxury pen. But let's go ahead and put out that pencil just a little bit. And so it does work. It doth work, he said. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. The Wing Sung. Wing Sung 601 with that hooded nib. Uh, obviously a takeoff of the uh, Parker 51 uh, with a vac filler. Uh, so, Wing Sung 601. This particular pen doesn't love every style of paper. I tried using it on uh, some paper the other day in another notebook and it really didn't like it. It wrote horribly on that particular paper. On this particular paper it did fairly well. Like I said, I wrote, uh, when I write a letter, I I often, you can find this with people who like to write with fountain pens and have pen pals, is I, I may have written like this long or this far and uh, changed inks. And it did fairly well. Uh, this one is a fine nib. It is a hooded nib. And I did put into this um, some Waterman uh, purple. I know there's uh, two words for that something purple. I don't know if it was gentle purple. Tender purple, that's what it was. <laughs> Racking my brain trying to remember what it was. So it was a tender purple. Uh, this bottle was sitting on my shelf right behind me. I just had a brain cramp, couldn't remember what the name of it was. Uh, but I kind of like this particular ink. This is the first pen I've filled up with, with that uh, tender purple, since I bought that bottle of ink and had it on my shelf. Had plenty of purples. Uh, I've just, and plenty of, uh, quite honestly, Waterman inks. I've just never used that particular ink. So, there you go. It's a fine nib. It doesn't write incredibly wet. Uh, but it's written fairly reliably thus far. I'm not the smoothest thing I've ever written with because uh, A, it's a fine nib, and uh, B, uh, it's uh, it's not the most expensive nor best done nib I've ever run across. This particular one here, you can post it here. This is, uh, this is the I Conquer, the... Eh, you know what? I don't think I like it posted so much because it's a little back weighty on that. So let's take a look at the I Conquer. This is the first time I'm, I'm really writing with it since I inked it up. I just inked it up this afternoon, just out of curiosity. And, and uh, I wasn't even sure I was going to do this video today. So I don't know who makes it. I'm not familiar with this brand, like I said. I just happened to run across it when I was searching for pens uh, on Mercari. But this tends to be um, a medium nib, uh, maybe just a hair on the fine side of medium. Uh, but you're seeing it as I am because I have not really written with this pen at all. So what did I put into this one? I put in that Parker Quink Black. I really expected very little out of this pen. Um, you know, it's okay. It's fairly reliable. It's it's not horrific. It's not the best pen I've ever written with, but that's very acceptable for what I got here. I can live with that. So I may just uh, end up giving that pen a little more use. Well, let's take a look at the Monte Grappa. And this one has been giving me hard starts. Let's see if I even have any ink that is still available in this pen, because I have used it quite a bit, actually. 
So, yeah, it's, it's got a good amount of ink, and I'm going to go ahead and prime it just a little bit. And you can tell I'm still twisting. I've got, yeah, there we go. Now we're starting to get a little bit of ink out of it. So let's see how she does. The Monta Grappa. And this happens to be the UEFA Championship. So this one technically is a medium. Depends on the paper you're writing on, I found out with this one. Uh, sometimes it looks a little more on the fine side, sometimes it looks on the medium side. You can get a good amount of line variation out of this Monte Grappa uh, nib. It wasn't as smooth as I was used to uh, for pens I have tried with the Monte Grappa name. Like I said, I only own one, um, but for the pens that I've tried and picked up and written with, this one here just kind of falls a little bit short, which would maybe why there were so many of these that were still available. I don't know. Maybe because it was a special edition for a soccer league that nobody here in the States really knows anything about. I don't know. Uh, but um, like I said, I've used it quite a bit. I carried it with me for the better part of a week before even trying to do anything with it. Maybe I'll do a complete video on it. And the last one I'm going to uh, write with for you because it's the last one that is inked up. And hopefully it will write because it's been sitting uh, for about a week. Uh, and that would be the Parker Challenger. There we go. The Parker Challenger. This pen has been laying down on its side like this in a drawer and uh, this is about the first time I've picked up this pen to write with in about a week. So it is a uh, typical Parker nib. It's a very wet nib. Gives a nice medium line and you can get a good amount of, wet, of good variation out of that. But look how wet that particular uh, ink is. Very, very well done. Very nicely um, and this is, uh, the, the ink here is the Diamine, that is a, uh, a green, black, that was made, uh, for Conway Stewart. I don't know the name of the ink. Uh, well, what I do know is it just says it's, uh, you know, it was made for Conway Stewart by Diamine, and you can see that... It's got that greenish black to it, so um, it does it does well. I've, I've got no complaints about it whatsoever. So there you go, folks. Uh, this is my pen mail. Maybe you got a few ideas for your collection. Uh, maybe you, you've run across ones here that you go, eh, I don't know if I really want to jump into it. Uh, this top one here, five six dollar pen delivered. Uh, this one here, eighteen dollars. This one here uh, was about fifteen bucks. This um, in the whole leather case uh, was about forty to forty-five. This one here, the Montegrappa, about ninety-nine bucks. Um, I, I don't be honest with you. I don't think that that was necessarily worth ninety-nine. Um, and I think the uh, Parker Challenger was somewhere in the neighborhood sixty, sixty-five bucks. And I can't show you the um, how this one writes because I don't have it inked up right now for the Schaefer Balance. Uh, but uh, if you want. Uh, some a good place to go look at for vintage pens. Uh, go see my friends over at Spear Bob. I bought from Spear Bob uh, quite a bit over the past several years. Had the chance to meet uh, Spear Bob um, and I do believe his wife at a pen show. So here you go, folks. That's pen mail for today. I got some more videos coming. I should be doing some videos on these individual pens here soon. Plus, I've got some others that are on the way, and I've got some more giveaways scheduled.